Hello and welcome to the video. This is my overview and review of this quad here. This is one of the latest quads from HGLRC. This is the Sector, both available as an X5 and a D5. They're calling it a freestyle frame, although they're calling it a racing drone on the website. I don't think it's racing uh, because it's just too heavy and chunky, but it has got a GPS on the back and it's got some nice cute features on here and we'll go through as we look at it. Looking on the website, this isn't a cheap drone by any stretch of the imagination. Lots of options for the receiver, both Free Sky, Crossfire, and things like ELRS as well. And there are lots of different motor options for both 4S and 6S. I've gone for the 4S on this one. These are the 2306.5 motors that I have on mine. Also available with either analog or HD FPV. So hopefully no matter what your radio is and what your goggles are, you should be able to find a version of this that it can fly with. A couple of key features on this. It does have replaceable arms, so you can take an arm off and swap things out if you are unlucky enough to bust one. It has a built-in XT60 connector just in front of the GPS, which is really handy. It means that there's no leads wobbling about that potentially could get caught in the props. The GPS is pre-installed at the back. Uh, that is appears to only be installed with no compass, so no iNav in here, but it is going to give you the GPS rescue mode and also give you your GPS speed, altitude, distance, direction to home, all that useful stuff. Interestingly, they have put these, they call them dust-proof straps. They're bits of elastic that go around the sides to keep all the muck out of your electronics. Not personally sure if I'm a fan of that. I'm guessing if you land in particularly muddier areas, it's going to stop all of that grit being thrown into your flight controller and your DJI Air unit. But it does also restrict airflow, which could become a problem on hotter days. I think it's probably something that I will remove as I continue to fly this. Also has lots more of the CNC aluminium pieces on here, as well as with the 3D print printed parts. So I particularly like, for example, the cage at the front where the camera is. So while we unbox it, let's go through the other specs. So again, this is the HGLRC Sector X5 FPV racing drone. Uh, that's what they're calling it on the website. It has the Sector X5 FR freestyle frame. That's a wheelbase of 210 millimeters. The flight controller is an F722 mini flight controller that'll support 3 to 6S LiPo. Underneath that is a 45 amp Zeus version 2 4-in-1 ESC setup. Camera at the front is a Cadix Polar Vista. And then we have the Aeolus 2306.5 motors. Uh, the KV on these on mine is 2550 for the 4S version, but you can get lots of different setups. Recommended battery for this on the 4S is a 1300 to 1500 milliamp hour battery. On a 6S version, you're going to want a 1260 to a 1300 milliamp hour pack. Now, the only difference that I can see on the website between the D5 and the X5 is the layout. The X5 is more of a classic compressed X, while the D5 is more of the dead cut style. Uh, so the dead cut one I prefer for filming because it keeps the props a little bit further away out of the view. In terms of the Betaflight setup, uh, interestingly, this was shipped with Betaflight 4.3, and that was something that I had to download the latest version of the configurator to have a look at. I'm not going to go through the specs too much with this. Uh, I do that in every video. I'm not sure how useful they actually are, but I will put a link to the dump file down below if you want to have a look at how everything is set up here. So with that said, let's go to the field and talk about how it flies. So this footage is from a gusty day. Unfortunately, we haven't had a lot of great flying weather here in the UK. We had lots of storms. So this happened to be one morning where it was nice and fine. And this is where the footage is from for this particular flight. It unfortunately started to get quite gusty as soon as I started flying the quad, which is just the way it tends to work at this time of year. First thing to notice is there's lots of power on this model, even for a 4S setup. I didn't go for the 6S here. I don't fly a lot of 6S because I don't tend to go for the really high speed models but even on 4s 
it easily has enough power to carry that weight of itself the battery and something like an action camera if you want to stick one of those and to get in and out of trouble without any problem at all and it can clip along at a fair old rate of knots in terms of the flying i'm getting about just under five minutes on a 1300 milliamp hour 4s lipo pack but do use a nice high c rating just to help avoid some of that voltage drop Hopefully one of the things you're seeing in the footage is that it is very stable, even on this day where the quad is really combating with some quite gusty winds. And occasionally you'll see here that even though I'm flying straight and level, I'm actually getting pushed across the field. I have to bank it over quite a bit to maintain my line. But in anything but those really high gusts, it's kind of ignoring that wind, which smaller, lighter models don't tend to do. It is also very smooth to fly. The tune is really well set up. So for experienced pilots, you're probably going to want to tweak your rates. But for those of you that just want a quad that's nicely set up and tuned out the box, this is one that you can have fun with and fly very smoothly without having to put a lot of thought into it. Motors and components are all nice and cool after the flight. I have removed the elasticated sides on mine. I don't like the idea of them... Uh, maintaining the heat inside the frame and the noise is as expected for this kind of five inch quad there's a low buzz when you're flying around it isn't particularly noticeable but if you blip the throttle or do some uh, maneuvers that require higher throttles then you can absolutely hear it screaming away Occasional dropouts for me here on the GPS, so make sure that you have a good lock before flying otherwise things like the beta flight GPS recovery mode won't stand a chance so as usual, this is a well-made quad from the guys at HGLRC. I do like the fact they've got the 4S and 6S versions with different options to suit. And this little flight control that's in here seems to work very well and has a lot of people that really like it. I do like the way it's put together, the way it's built, the GPS, the camera mount, the metal cage for the camera at the front. It's got really nice build quality too. Everything is beautifully soldered. And I like the cute touches like the S logo in the different places. Separate arms are also nice on something like this. It's, you're going to have to work reasonably hard to break it from the playing that I've done here. Uh, that's because of all the extra carbon fiber that's in here. So this is a skeletonized racer. This will take a little bit of abuse. So you can definitely use this as a daily driver. And I like the XT60 connector that's mounted on the top deck. That means that it limits the amount of wires that are flopping about, which might not be a problem when you fly. But if you flip over in a crash, it might push one of those wires into a place where the props are going to catch it. Just a note, my sample here came without the left-hand circular polarized antenna, which you need for the DJI kit. Uh, so I had to source my own, which is why it's a Menace RC one on my particular version here. The ones that you'd buy from HGLRC resellers will come with a branded HGLRC left-hand circular polarized antenna in the pack. Only a few points to note on this. The beta flight setup was 4.3, so I did need to download the latest beta configuration to set things up. However, the setup in beta flight 4.3 is pretty good out of the box. You are going to have to visit your on-screen display and you are going to have to visit the modes tab just to set up everything the way you like it. Be aware it is reversed prop direction, so I had to swap mine over. It isn't as clear in the Betaflight 4.3 configurator uh, which way round they're supposed to be. The motor direction on this model was reversed, so check it on yours. Again, this isn't a racer, it isn't a skeletonized model. It talks about uses the word racer in some of the stuff on the website this i would say is a jack of all trades this is something that you can fly fast you can do a bit of floppy flippy you can do some exploring you can do some filming it's a real nice all-rounder that's built well that will take a little bit of abuse I'm personally not a fan of the elastic side skirts though. I have removed them on mine and I personally think they do a better job out of the way helping the air get all the components and keeping everything nice and cool. I would like to see a little bit more detail on the HGLRC website about why you'd want one motor setup over another on the particular model. There are four options, two for 4S and two for 6S, helping to explain when you'd want each of those variants would be very handy. And the other thing I'll mention is the I-squared seat pads are available on the flight controller, but again, there isn't any compass in here. So the GPS uh, doesn't have a compass on it either. So there's no iNav 
available on this thing without modifications. I hope that HGLRC make some dead cat styles with slightly bigger arms, slightly bigger props, maybe six or seven inches, and add that kind of iNav capability. That's a really useful thing if you're gonna to want to run an Explorer style. So in summary, another excellent solid quad that can be used for having fun, exploring, and filming. The dead cat style may be better if you do want to do filming, but this is a really nice all-rounder that works really well straight out of the box. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.